tell me a process of like you go in and they give you vocals of Pac. Uh -huh. What is your mentality to say, wow, this is Tupac, it's a legend, he passed away. How am I going to make this relevant or just classic? You know what's crazy? When you hear Pac rapping, I, like, I don't even remember creating the record. That's how magical it was. That's how spiritual it is. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you hear somebody, and my hands just start moving. Naturally, my hands just start moving. I don't even have to look. I can just feel. I don't even talk about it. I feel about it. Um, how do you feel about that movie that came out straight out of Compton and it really showed that Easy was right. the man? And by the way, I spoke to DOC yesterday. What? Yeah, I told him I was going to see you. He said hello. Yeah, we did. I, I, I need to He's talk to him. Texas. I need to talk to him. Like, how do you me, feel me about that whole thing? That NWA movie comes out. A lot of these younger generations didn't even know Easy E was. Right. And they did show him in a good light that he was the man. But everybody was putting him straight out of Cleveland, straight out of Dallas. Yeah, they didn't that. understand the game about it, though. But when they saw the movie, they understood that Easy was the right. man. How do you feel about Easy and NWA? And you grew up in West Coast. Man, I, man, I grew up on that. That was like, man, I mean, for, for me to, like, there was only a couple of eras where I actually, three, three eras. I can name the three. Wow. That, 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 I, that I actually dressed like these people. You know what I mean? For, for somebody to dress, like, for me to dress like you, you got to be somebody. You know, of course, my favorite, Jam Master J Everybody and Run DMC. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Beat Street. I had to had a I had to had a Kango in the sweatsuit, right. you know, the the gazelles. I had to have that, you know. And the third was easy you know. That's a whole variety of uh, like east, west, yeah. and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. I'm gonna throw out some names. Tell me what you think. UGK. We go way way back, man. And and you know, me and Pimp, like, anytime we talk, I'd always have to set some time aside because I know we're gonna be talking for at least two hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't want to hang up or disrespect you. He said, man, what happened to that bald man? The one that man with that big old ass, man, the one I was talking to, dog. You seen him, man? And you're like, man, we just get on the phone and just be talking, man. And he talk about <clears throat> how these young cats, man, Jazzy, man, get up under these young cats, man. Tell them what it is, man. It's real shit, man. Put them, tell them put some guitars in that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Tell them put some real, something real in there. Wow. You know what I mean? That's why they came up with Trill, like True and Real. Um, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, man. Snoop Dogg is just like he is, like uh, uh, everybody's uncle. You know what I'm saying? Uncle Snoop. You know what I mean? Rest in peace is June, but you know what I'm saying? That like we were like family, and it's crazy because all of this time, we like I would like literally go go to his hotel when he's in Atlanta, pick him up at the hotel, solo dolo, just me and him, and drive back to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Relationship. Yeah, relationship. Um, Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine Dupri is like one of my favorite producers and one of my favorite DJs at the same time. Like Jermaine Dupri, like, cause you know, we like, you know, we went like anytime Jermaine was doing a party, we had to be there because Jermaine know all the shit to play. We have we have all the girls there and have all the girls in your section because you know the music gonna jump, so that means all the girls gonna dance. You know, you know what I mean? You know that Jermaine was a backup dancer for Run DMC? He was on the Run DMC. I know so, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a, he was a dude. dancer. He's still around. Um, yeah. He's in some of them videos. He exactly. was a what? Uh, Freaks Come Out of Night? Exactly. Um, young her. Jeezy. Young Jeezy? From Atlanta. <clears throat> young Jeezy. Wait, I don't know if you know. You know about me and Young Jeezy? No. Okay. Honestly, truthfully, no. I'm just throwing names let me Let me tell you something about Young Jeezy. Young Jeezy had a record. He came up to me, walked up to me, and had a record. And it was it was a double album. It's called the Soft and the Hard. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, you know, the, the like the Coke, like the Trap. You know what I'm saying? Played me the album. Had everybody on Lil John, uh, uh, Bone Crusher, Ti. Had some everybody on the record. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, how the hell you get all these people? He's like, man, I, I get money. He pulled out like I was like, what you do? He's like, man, I rap. I was like, oh, I thought you was promoting this dude. He's like, man, look at the cover, man. I said, oh shit, that's you. You know what I'm saying? I took him. To Shakir Stewart. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Yeah. Oh, so you took him there. I took him to Shakir wow. Stewart. I was literally standing next to Jeezy when he did when, when he performed for LA Reed. He was wow. on my, he was signed at noon time. He was signing my label. Wow. Yeah. Okay. E40. Yep. E40 is my brother. How does how do you feel about E40 just stays relevant? Man, because I mean, when you got your own, I mean, can't nobody take that? It's your own shit. 
You know what I'm saying? It's your own shit. But if you if you don't ride it, then it's gonna be what it is, and somebody else gonna run off with it and do what what it, what they do with it. See, he like a lot of people own something, and then they try to they, then people grab it, and then they feel like it's it's convoluted now. No, it's still yours. They can do it, but you was the first one with it, so they can't do it like you did it. Most people like to try to copy. Yeah, and then a lot of people can't bounce back from that. Right. Southern music. Right. Okay. And you got Atlanta, you got all that. It's a melting pot. But I want to talk about, I'm going to throw some more names out. Devin the Dude. Devin the Dude, man. My, the high-ass little cousin that come through smoking, <laughs> don't stop smoking weed. Just keep on rolling. And you don't never want to, you, you don't never plan on getting that high, but you end up that high fucking around with Devin. He's like the Snoop Dogg of the South. Right. You know, a lot of people don't really know that. Like, he's like the smoking his... We know that. Yeah, yeah. That. I mean, yeah. So, um, the Ghetto Boys. Ghetto Boys, man. I mean, all three of my favorite people in the world. Like, Bushwick Bill will uh, uh, talk you up under a table. And very intellectually, I might add. And and just, man, God, you, 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 you conjuring up some things right now. Um, Brad, you know... Mr. Jordan, that's my dude. He would come in the studio and be coming in and trying to tell me how to produce records. And, you know, it's crazy to see the nuances of some of these artists off, you know, offset and all, to see the things that they'd be interested in. Be like, man, no, man, I think you should use a bigger snare, man, and do that. I was like, well, why don't you produce a damn record? Right. Yeah. But you, you know, do you take constructive criticism? Of, of course. Right. Of course. Um, rap a lot, Suave House, Tony Draper, Little J, so important to hip hop, uh -huh. that a lot of these younger kids don't even know about it. Yeah. You know, they were so important, the South. Yeah. Rap a lot and Tony Draper Suave House. Wow. What does rap a lot mean to a guy like you? Rap a lot? Yeah. Well, rap a lot pretty much, like, they, they gave, they gave, see, for, for me, like, people think about the rappers, I thought about people like, you know, Mr. Lee. The producer, oh, N.O. Joe, come you know on. what I'm saying? Over there hanging out with Mike Dean at Hippie House. Come on, come talk on, to man. me, talk to me, keep come talking. On. Yeah, man, see, see, keep talking. The, the, bring the, them people, out. Bring the, the folks that had the sound, you know what I'm saying? Um, I love Zero, uh, too. T-Mix. Zero. T-Mix? Remember huh? T-Mix? Yeah, yeah T-Mix, yeah, yeah T-Mix, my man. T-Mix, my man, you know what I'm saying? Then you can't, can't help but just slide on over and go to New Orleans and go to Cash Money. Yeah, let's talk about Cash Money. What do you feel about... Cash Money Baby, Lil Wayne Slim. I mean, I mean, they gave me my first big production deal. I don't know if you know, but I did a, a 50 song deal with them. Wow. <laughs> the first one ever of its kind. I did a 50 song deal with Cash Money. Um, I, I co-produced on um, um, Still Fly. Uh, um, the one with Baby, uh, Pretty Lady Gonna Do That Dance, oh, Pretty yeah. Lady Ooh. Gonna Do That Dance. You the hook uh, king, too. You the hook yeah, king. Yeah, all of that. Uh, um, I, I'm way more fly than you. I'll take your dime from you. Make her want to spend all night with me. You know what I'm saying? All that. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful life. Colorful ice. All of that, man. It's a lot, lot of, lot of records over there with them. Wow, history. Biggie. Yeah. He did a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. And this is a blessing. Um, how do you feel about this phenomenon of EDM dance music? I mean, I think it's dope. I think it's dope. Anytime music can bring people together and get them to doing something positive, it's always great. I think it's always great. I told Scott Stoltz yesterday that he should collab on that stuff. And that's what happened with you with the, the young power by Raw B mm -hmm. producer. Now Snoop got the record. Right. I have a young producer. Maybe I'm going to talk to his manager, try to get you to co-produce. He's killing the EDM game. Okay. Because it's, and you're a guy like you have no ego to work put with. Put some no. soul on that. Yeah, exactly. Because like that's soul. Said, like you'll put the, with Eminem, you're going to put the grits with the shrimp. Yeah. Maybe shrimp the grits. fried shrimp with the lobster tail. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, man. Put a little soft sprinkle that damn thing. Me personally, okay. I don't like cheating the game. Right. Everybody's on a laptop and they're saying I'm a producer and this one's a rapper. You play instruments and I yeah. want to know which instruments you play. Uh -huh. uh, how do you feel about that? Everybody's trying to cheat the game now when you really know how to make music and produce. Uh, I, don't really, I don't really call it cheating the game. You know what I'm saying? Because 
when you look at the MPC, the 3000, you're talking about hip hop, you're talking about, you know, uh, it's a workstation. I don't even see it, kids it, using that. I don't even see kids these days yeah, using yeah, but, it. Yeah, but, but that, I'm just talking about my, my choice of, uh, of, you know, my weapon of choice. You know, I still got the, you know, I got, I got five producers. So, you know, they all use the Ableton, the Fruity Loops. The, they use all of that. Cause, so I get a chance to get a bar of all of it. But, I mean, if I go on Fruity Loops and make a record, it's going to take me four hours. Versus me getting on the MP, I'm making it seven minutes. Seven minutes. When one two step, when I did one two step, seven minutes. Uh, uh, the hits uh, come uh, quick. Uh, oh, quick. Six minutes. That's yeah, what Swiss Beats told me. Yeah. He gets on the MPC and five, like, five minutes. Boom. Five minutes. Like Waffle House. Do you play instruments? Do you play instruments? Uh, yeah. A little what bit. I play. I, I dabble on the keys, dabble on the bass, like my pops, drums. Uh, just I just dabble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I can get it down though. Oh, you dance, I can, I, when you I put it together, it's going to sound like a, a product chisel. The first track you ever made and said, you know what, this is going to open my career, and the first song you ever heard that you produced on the radio, and how did you feel at that time? That show enough. Now, if you really listen to that beat, that beat pattern... Is friends, friends, that, how friends many have them? Well, kind of, because that was always bit, that was bit. always my favorite beat. I, back then, and then if you hear the turnaround, you hear the Al Green. It's and then I got you know a, a live Juno 106 on there, a real Juno 106. No other keyboard sounds like that keyboard. You know what I mean? So I actually tweak those sounds, you know what I'm saying, the waves and everything. Nice. Where were you the first time you heard a record on the radio and like, oh my God, I'm on the radio? That was the one. That, uh, Where uh, were you? Do you remember? I was in um, Sharpstown Mall parking lot. Where's that? In, uh, in, in Houston. Wow. Yeah, I know the Galleria. Yeah, in Houston. Yeah, but Sharpstown is the and hood. It came, it came Sharpstown is where you get where where you can get like five people in that same mall sell gold grills. I'm sure Drake took me there or Paul Wall. And someone, must have, someone must have took me there. Yeah, Paul Wall. You in the, the car? You in a car or something? They came yeah, in the I was in a car and everybody was playing it. And you said I made it? That was when, you know, you drive by people and everybody's playing the radio? It was like that. And you said I made it? Yeah. I made it. Wow. Nobody can fuck with me. Wow. No one can fuck with you. Dad. No. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's but how I felt. Why do you always say Jazzy Fizzle and that whole little spiel you have? Like, uh, like I think it kind of derived from being around short, from around too short. We didn't talk about short. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, too short. We, we uh, like, but yeah, being around too short and then uh, um, loving E40, you know, and being around Snoop as well. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You know, I tell people, I'm going to tell you another name that's going to throw you probably like, whoa. I worked with Mac Maul. Wow. From the Bay Area. Yeah. He was signed to Relativity Sony. Yeah. Maul is my man. I call him the Bay Area Nas. Mm. So, you know, we can go, like, I tell kids all day, like, you're, you're a West Coast rapper from the Bay, and you don't know, Mac Mall, Humpty from Digital Underground, wow. Too Short, wow. E-40, Whoa. La Loonies. Yeah. Hip-hop, hip-hop don't know you. Yeah. Hip-hop uh -huh. don't know you. I know all of them. Exactly. Hip-hop don't know you, so yeah. the young generation, they don't know. Too Short, let's talk about Short. Man, Short Dog, man, one of the most giving guys, one of the most, um, I don't know, I don't, for some reason, I feel like Short's underrated. Very underrated, but he stays relevant. Yeah, oh, stay relevant, stay relevant. But I love Short, man. Short is like a brother to me. He's like a brother to me, and always been a supporter of my production, uh, my vocals. You know what I'm saying? He he put me on so many records, and and one of the milestones of me and me and Short's relationship was the day he went in there. Um, uh, I I think uh, we were doing a song with Parliament Funkadelic. He was Ooh. like he was like Jazzy. He said he was standing out in the hallway. He said, "Man, Jazzy, there's like a hundred of them in there." He said, but I need you to go in there and make that, glue that shit together. Wow. He Amazing. said, because you know, them motherfuckers, the Funketeers, they got their money. They, they, you know where their heads are, because you know they on that shit. Yeah, you, you've been <laughs> truly blessed. About. Your catalog is amazing. Yeah, so um, we went in there and, yeah. and did it. Amazing. That, that, getting it. You should be getting it. Get it yep. getting did, it good. You ever think about going back to being an artist and doing an album? You said what? You ever think about being an artist again and doing an album? Yep. Me and, and CeeLo got an album in the can. So we need to watch out for that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hold tight. Okay. Nice. It's crazy, too. When I go to Atlanta, I'm not a strip club type of guy. I've been right. to Magic City. I, I was just recently down there for something, BET Awards. Okay. And my man Apple from Drugs uh, Clothing Line took me to a strip club. I'm eating fried 
shrimp, fried chicken, and french fries. Oh, I was goodness. bored as hell, but it was some ghetto-ass hood spot, which I don't mind. How important or influential is the strip clubs in Atlanta? Oh, man. Like, the strip club is where if you are trying to be like a hot producer, hot MC, hot whatever, you know, in the streets and, and, and known like, you know, virally or, or just just in the hood. You know what I'm saying? When I say virally, I don't mean social media. I mean virally in the, you know, in, in, the, in the community. Just just fall through the strip club, man. Have you just sit down and have you a bar with a young lady? You know what I'm saying? Te you know, find out who's the man is popping his chick and give her about five hundred dollars and tell her to say your name. You know what I'm saying? Tell a DJ and go pay the DJ to play something and tell him yeah. to say your name. You know what I mean? And, and you you man, it ain't nothing like Atlanta strip clubs in the world. And I've been around the world. I heard that before. Yeah. What's your favorite strip club in Atlanta? Hmm. Let's give him a plug. <laughs> it's it's not really one. All right, it's all right. Name a couple. Uh, of course, Magic. Ma Magic. Of course, Magic. Onyx, Follies. Give them the three. Oh, oh. If if you want to go oh, over on a, on a lighter side and a more executive, more of a gentleman's club, then we go to Cheetah. Yeah. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? That's where you can go and you can have a lobster. Great. You can really? have a whole lobster. And you can have a whole lot of... I'm not a strip club without a guy. Yeah. You did a big record for Sierra. Uh, one, two, step. Right. Tell me the process. Um, of the record? Yeah. How that whole came I out? I was sitting alone in, in, uh, in my four-corner room staring at candles. Not just kidding. <laughs> um, I, was, uh, I was sitting in the crib. Oh, I tell you what. Go back further. We had goodies. Lil John did goodies. And... and, and um, that was one of uh, Sean Garrett's first hit records. Song we are depend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put Sean Garrett in the game, and and uh, um, Sean Garrett had a record, and had the Goodies record came with that record. So we put the record out, smash. Oh, I remember that record. We didn't have another up tempo record, but the record did so well. I was like, Yo, I'm not ready to put my drink down. Oh, I need another up tempo right, smash. Right, right. So the label was calling me. Saying, yo, Jazzy, we got to go with the old record. I was like, ah. Oh, it's a smash, y'all. It's like, well, no, we don't, that ain't what we want to do. I was like, yeah. But we need another up-tempo record before we go to that record. Then we'll be a one, two, three, and we'll be out of here. We'll be three, four million. That's what I told him. And he's like, everybody pressing me, mashing on me. So I made one, two, step. Went to the studio, made one, two, step. Called Missy. Shout out Missy Elliott. Yep, shout out to Missy Elliott. Sent Missy about five records. When Missy sent the records back, she put the records that she sent back. Nobody's ever done this to me, ever. She put the fucking records in a form of a mixtape. I sent it back to you? So it was like continuous. It never stopped. It was, it was like, yo, hot shit, Sierra, da da da. From one record comes on that I produce. Then she's still talking. Then it goes into the next record. The third record was One Two Step. Wow. I wish I had that CD right That's now. That's how it came. You know, it's so funny. I was on Missy Elliott's reality show. I wish I still show. had that CD. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. You know, I was on Missy Elliott's reality show, Road to Stardom. Remember what? that show? I Yellow was... Wolf was on that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that. I, saw I was that. on the show. They called me the I White Shook Knight. Wow. What a great wow. story, man. So, so, Jazzy, man. What an amazing interview, man. I appreciate you, you so much, man. Thank God you, bless. Man. Thank you, God and bless nothing you. but more and more, more success. continued success because you're a humble guy Thank you, and only God could judge, man, and you're a talented person. If you could Ladies and gentlemen.